Hi guys, welcome to Motivation to Invest. Our mission is to motivate you to invest for your financial freedom by providing you with valuable investing tips and strategy. Now I've received a number of questions recently from many of you guys asking about the PE ratio or the price to earnings ratio. Just what exactly is it? Well online I've seen a lot of surface level answers. So they just sort of tell you the basics, tell you the formula of how to calculate it. But I've not seen anything that goes that level deeper. So in this video, I'm going to start off with a high level explanation of exactly what it is and how it's used and why it's one of the most important financial metrics you should know before investing into any company on the stock market. Then I'm also going to go a level deeper and I'm going to calculate it two ways using real business numbers from a financial statements of a large market cap company. So if you wish to know how to value a company correctly before investing in its stock, then you definitely need to watch this video till the end. Let's dive in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah, flex, I just want to win. Before we get started, go ahead, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to turn the notification bell on, that way you'll get notified when I release future videos and stock picks. It's good to be first on the scene when an interesting stock is at a great price. The price to earnings ratio or PE ratio is arguably the most important financial metric you should know when investing in the stock market. Basically, the PE ratio will tell you whether a stock is overvalued, undervalued, or just right. This is a ratio between the stock price of the company and its earnings. For example, if I compare the price to earnings ratio of well-known tech giants, you will see that a lot of those are overvalued. As you can see, Amazon's price to earnings ratio is the highest amongst them all. This shows that the company is classed as overvalued and thus has a speculative component attached to its price. In other words, people believe that this company is worth 100 times or 80 times its actual earnings. The general stock market community is bullish on this stock and predict a lot of growth in the future. Now you may have heard of the forward PE ratio and the trailing PE ratio. Now basically, the forward P.E. ratio just uses the projected earnings of the business for say 10 years into the future. And the trailing P.E. ratio just uses the historical earnings of the business 10 years into the past. However, you need to know that past performance of a company does not guarantee future results. And market predictions in the future are also indefinite. So really, these metrics are just a guide to help you value a company relative to others in its industry. Now, although many of these stock screeners online show the PE ratio for you, it still helps to understand how it's calculated to give you a much deeper understanding of this metric. This can help you spot great investment opportunities and hidden gems. As if you understand how the PE ratio is calculated, then you can spot errors that the market has made in making this assumption. Diving into the calculations here, we're going to calculate the P.E. ratio for Apple. So the P.E. ratio can be calculated in three different ways. The first method to calculate the price to earnings ratio is to take the stock price per share and divide this by the earnings per share. The second method is to take the market cap and divide that by the total net earnings. And then there is a third method there. We're going to do this method first and then this method. So, into the calculations here for Apple. Its market cap is $1.253 trillion. Now, to find this market cap, I'll go down to the definitions here. So, the definition of a market cap is basically the company's share price times the number of shares available. So, if we go to the Apple's data here, this can be found on Google, just simply Google search Apple share price, and then this will come up straight away. So I always use this as the first point of call 
Google Google share checker. So as you can see here, market cap there, $1.26 trillion. That's your market cap. And then the share price is currently 291.27 US dollars. Okay, so we've got our market cap. We need to convert that to billions. So one trillion is 1,000 times one billion. So obviously these are trillion dollar companies these days. We need to convert them before we do our calculation. So 1.253 trillion dollars is 1,253 billion dollars. Now the earnings is, the earnings are 55.256 billion dollars annually for 2019. So we can find out this information from for example, Bloomberg uh, Checker. So we'll show you here. So if you go on to Bloomberg here, and I go down, this is a stock screener where you can just basically go to Bloomberg here, type in any s company here, and then it'll come up, all of its data. So annually, clicked here on the income statement which is one of the major financial statements. And as you can see, its net income here is 55,256 million. Yeah, so we get this number here. We can even take this directly from the financial statements, which I'll show you in a minute. So we get that number. We converted it to billions, 55.256 billion US dollars. Then we just divide it. So it's your market cap, divided by the earnings. And we've come to a figure of 22.67 as a PE ratio. Approximately 23 using 2019's earnings. So this is what you call a trailing PE, as we spoke about earlier. So if we compare that to the calculated version on the stock screen, we can see it's here, PE ratio, 22.83 so it's very very close of course there'll be some rounding error and that's where the variation comes in also the price is always changing in terms of the uh, price of the actual shares so yeah that's how you calculate it's quite simple really that that's method one um, I'll just go through a few definitions for you because a lot of people do these calculations and they don't actually understand what the the definitions behind each of the terms mean so I'm just going to explain, of course, earnings are profit. So people will be saying, oh, check the earnings on the income statement. The earnings are just the profit of the business. So the earnings per share means the corporation's net income after income tax expenses. Gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. So that's just different types of profits or earnings. Income refers to net profit. So that's when they say income statement, it's net profit after expenses and taxes. Revenue is the total amount of money the business receives from its customers for its products and services. So revenue is turnover. And then obviously market cap there, share price times the number of shares available. So yeah, we did method one. We could also get those numbers and if we want to be more exact or if it's a more obscure company where we don't believe the stock screener, we can get those numbers from the financial statements. If I type here, Apple Investor Relations, click here, Investor Updates, Form Q10, so that'll be the annual report here. So this just tells you all the details of the company. And on here, you've got the financial statement there. So condensed consolidated statements of operations, unaudited. Now that's a key point. So really you wanna be looking for audited statements, but obviously Apple's a very trustworthy company. But if you're investing in more obscure company, definitely look for audited statements. So you know there's not been any financial shenanigans going on. Earnings per share. $2.58 earnings per share there. 
you've just got all your different numbers on here which you can use to calculate so you've got your sales revenue there's another stock screen I use it's called simply wall street they do have free accounts and they also have paid accounts so if we go down to pe ratio here it says the pe ratio is poor value compared to the tech industry average so they're comparing it to the average of the tech industry so they're calling it 22.5 for apple but we know apple is not an average company so um, you would expect it to be higher than average in terms of the amount of people who are optimistic about this company's future. So that's another way to find the PE ratio. And then, of course, Bloomberg, they've already got the PE ratio here for you. So you don't even have to calculate it. But it just helps to know how it's calculated. So I'll show you one more method of how to calculate it just to cement that knowledge into your mind. So this is method two. So you take the share price and you divide it by the earnings per share. So earnings per share considers all outstanding equity shares plus all convertible securities which can be converted into equity shares. So if we get the earnings per share here, 12.75. The earnings per share on the financial report, I believe that would be a quarterly earnings per share or three months ended, three months ended earnings per share. That's your six month ended earnings per share. So the other one will be a 12 month earning, earnings per share on Bloomberg. So you simply divide. So take the share price, $289.07 share, divide that by 12.75. Um, 12 12.75. Seven, five, and that will equal 22.7, which is what we found out earlier. Overall, the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio is arguably the most valuable metric you should know before investing to any company in the stock market. You need to know if the price of the company is good value or not. Now, if some of these calculations in this video went over your head, don't worry about it. Just go back and review the first section where I explain simply how the P-E ratio is used. There are a variety of other metrics used to value companies, especially those in specific industries. For example, the P-E ratio is not a good indicator to use when valuing most cyclical companies. For example, the automotive industry, as when they are at the top of their cycle and have the most earnings, their price will look relatively cheap when in fact it is not. This is because the earnings is inversely proportional to the PE ratio. For cyclical companies, you're best off using the price to sales ratio, which is the stock market price relative to its sales. If you would like me to do a video on that in the future, just comment below. In addition, I've got another video coming out very, very soon, which will detail the 10 most important financial metrics you should know when valuing a company before investing in the stock market. So that video will be coming out very, very soon and I'll leave a link below when it does. So what are your thoughts on the PE ratio? Do you understand it and do you think it's important? Comment below. Also check out my other videos where I analyze five stocks I purchased during the previous stock market crash, which has seen me up by a thousand pound in just seven days. Now as a long-term investor, this increase doesn't really make a difference to me but it's still nice to watch your portfolio grow over such a short period of time. This suggests a possible V-shaped recovery from this recession. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, smash that like button, and definitely subscribe. See you next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah, flex. I just wanna win.